This week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast is brought to you by Artbase. Are you managing an art collection or an artist studio or a gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? Well, Artbase is the right software to manage your art business. Artbase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. Enter your data once, and you can use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and so much more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used on the cloud from any location on any device. So what are you waiting for? Go to artbase.com today to learn more. And be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount. Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. Hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. Another week, and I think everyone's optimism continues to grow. The number of COVID cases are down, and more people have gotten the vaccine. Within the art world, there's been a lot of talk, or I should say gossip, about which art fairs will be feasible this year. It's really exciting. I I hope this momentum continues. In this week's episode of the podcast, we chat with Francesca Bellini-Joseph, founder of the ACT program, an online art career transformation program for the art world. Francesca used to work at Art Tactic actually for several years, and she just launched this really incredible course, one for artists and one for galleries. For artists, it really helps prepare them for every aspect of the art world outside of making art. We have a lot of listeners who are artists, and I often speak with artists who are trying to make it as an artist. I know it's incredibly competitive. I always tell them that they need to think of themselves as more than artists. They're really entrepreneurs. They're small business owners. When we think about things like technology, social media, networking, there are so many ways you as an artist can be proactive to try to advance your career. And at the end of the day, it's up to you to push yourself to do these things in order to have a successful career. So Francesca shares shares with us some of the information about her course and also offers us some free advice. And they also have another course focused on galleries, which I think it's especially interesting because I always wonder how often are galleries really reflecting on their business practices and are they making significant changes to them? It's a really fascinating conversation with Francesca. We hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening. Francesca used to be a colleague of mine at Art Tactic, and it's so great to see you branching out and starting your own business. It's so great to have you on the podcast. Thank you, Adam, for inviting me. And it's true, I'm very happy to come back to the Art Tactic um, podcast and and house. Of course, it's our pleasure to have you on. So when I first read about ACT, I thought, wow, this is really valuable. Uh, I really don't think there's anything like this out there to offer this kind of education to artists as well as galleries. Uh, But before we get into some of the details of ACT, tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to establish a platform that provides these kind of services. No, thank you very much. I think, um, yes, it's it's something that I believe uh, touches on so many pain points in the art world from many professionals. Um, So I have 15 years of experience in the art world. I went to art school in the early 2000s. I have a BA in fine arts. And when or since I graduated, um, I have been involved and I have worked in the art world in many different capacities, starting with, of course, uh, my art practice, which I developed for a few years. But then I started working in galleries, in collection management, in art market analysis with Art Tactic, where I did the Latin American research um, and analysis, Uh, online teaching at Sotheby's Institute, which I've done for the past seven years. And this has been one of my one of the most important experiences I've had and also supporting institutions through various committees at Tate, uh, the MAC Foundation in the south of France, as well as other institutions in in the UK and in Latin America. Everything I've ever done professionally and personally is represented in the ACT program. The ACT program in a way already existed because I've done this for a few years already. I 
have supported galleries in their SEO with the digital strategies. I have done career coaching for some artists in my network. So it's something I was already doing. Um, I guess the difference is that during lockdown, I saw the opportunity and I also had the time to design it differently, to to uh, work on a different structure that I that would allow me to deliver this in the way that I'm delivering it and also reaching much more people, artists and galleries around the world. And this is what you can see in the ACT program's website. Um, when you have the opportunity to see the art world from so many different perspectives, as I have seen it, from those who create art and sell art to those who buy it, you can start seeing there is a profound distance between how these two poles understand the relationship. There is an enormous lack of empathy in the art world from all the different stakeholders. You can find artists everywhere with brilliant work and galleries with excellent artist programs, but both of them, they reach a low ceiling very soon, even at the very top end, because they are all they, they tend to sit or we all tend to sit on our assumptions. Um, we don't test them. We don't revisit them. Uh, and it's very difficult to to review the things we do, review our careers, review our businesses and so on. So the obvious way of bridging that gap or addressing the absence of those elements that I identify is, in my view, what the ACT program calls professional skills. But unlike what is available out there, like the conferences, the books, the, the networking opportunities that we all have, the ACT program is not about passively consuming uh, someone else's experiences or someone else's information. I think that it's very difficult to consume um, your, your way to realizing your expectations or, or, or improving your business or improving your, your, your activities in the art world or in any other sector. This is more time to create. So it is a, a hands-on program where the participants, galleries and artists uh, have to work <laughs> on finding their, their problems, on, on, on solving them. And, um, and the whole idea is to do uh, a sort of do it with you model in which the participants and, and the team and the tutors can, can uh, work together in, in, in finding the solutions and, and, get in, and providing some, some insights to the participants. That's really interesting, especially the point you raised about these panels and conferences that exist where you hear speakers talk, but you aren't sitting down and assessing your own career, or your own business, and really determining how you can improve it. So let's start with artists who you offer a specific class for. You know, for my conversations with a lot of artists, especially younger ones, I like to talk to them about the fact that they aren't just an artist, they're really a small business. And in order to be successful as an artist today, it's more than just about making good art. You have to make a lot of important decisions. You have to be entrepreneurial. You have to market yourself and network in order to advance and promote your career. Are they teaching any of these skill sets nowadays at art school? Or is the education solely focused on making art? And do artists feel prepared to have a career when they leave their MFA programs? Well, I just want to say that uh, the very notion of entrepreneurship uh, I think it's too much to ask art schools. Uh, I think it's, um, I wish, I mean, I, I strongly believe in what you're saying, in that artists are, uh, the idea of artists as entrepreneurs. But unfortunately, this is something that um, doesn't happen in, the, in, in, in art education. Because one, one thing you must know is that one of the main fears that artists experience is the fear of selling out. That is one of the, you know, like one of those fears that is very ingrained in 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 most artists around the world. Um, this has no nationality. This has no region. It's it's it's, uh, it's universal in a way. Um, the notion of entrepreneurship, sales, money, networking, are all taboo words 
in art school, in art education, because art schools are constantly antagonizing art and artists with the market. And obviously all those words and all those notions and concepts are more related to the market rather than the art. In art school, as you say, education is very much about art thinking, even more than art producing. The idea of making art is not even central as you would expect. Uh, in art education, it's more about art thinking, which is actually the reason why before there were um, uh, programs in art curating, masters in curating, many aspiring curators would go to, um, would do a BA in, 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 in arts, in fine arts, uh, because it's more about uh, creating or developing a way of thinking that can lead to making art or not. Um, in that sense, there is a notion that is very, um, that is central to art education, which is this notion that art speaks for itself. And this is something you always listen from your tutors, from your teachers, who in many cases are other artists uh, that are your teachers as well. So this idea of art speaks for itself is almost contradictory of what you are going to find as an artist professionally in the professional world. So no, most uh, art schools don't offer training in developing professional skills. If they do, uh, it can be like a workshop or bringing someone as a conference to tell them how to present their work, how to write about it. But it's not representative of art education. Now, in my research, I surveyed nearly 200 artists from different nationalities through the networks of um, different institutions like Delfina Foundation and Gasworks in London, uh, Residency Unlimited in New York, Flora and NSA Arte in Bogota. And I asked these artists about their interest in developing, in learning or improving uh, different professional skills, and I also ask them about the main pain points that they suffer in their careers. Um, it's interesting to find that younger generations of artists, younger than my generation, are still interested in looking for these skills, and they ex have experienced or, ex or are experiencing similar professional pain points than older generations which basically means that art education hasn't changed much over the years. And if this is something of your interest and uh, people uh, listen to the podcast now, you can download the infographic of the survey for free in our website. And just to summarize on this, on, on, on your question, because it's very, um, it's very interesting, this idea of art education, artists and entrepreneurship, when you leave art school, in general terms, uh, you leave without uh, having developed or understanding these professional skills that you will need eventually in your career. So it's something that but eventually you will have to communicate, you will have to talk, you will need to know how this works. Um, so they leave art school without knowing how to communicate what they do. But that is in combination with the ambition and the trust that you as a 20-year-old artist that you have uh, of conquering the world. You know, like all young artists or actually any, any person in any profession, when we are young, we just want to conquer the world. And it's only when you reach... Um, your 30s or somewhere around that age that you truly realize how difficult it is. You have a wonderful work, but you have poor um, you, you lack the, the communication skills and professional skills to, to stand out. And you are trying to develop a career in a very competitive market, possibly shrinking market. Um, so, um, Yes, you need to, or they need to learn how to help themselves to stand out. Yeah, and while I think this is very valuable for artists, I also think it's really important for our listeners who aren't artists to fully understand where artists are when they're coming out of their MFA programs. 
So as part of the ACT program, one of the programs is Focus on Artists. Tell us about the artist-specific program you're offering and what are some of the skills artists can develop from attending it? Sure. So in the research I was mentioning, I found three main problems that artists experience. The first one is feeling invisible. Feeling invisible means that uh, they feel that curators are not paying attention to them, collectors are not paying attention to them. Perhaps they haven't reached the level of visibility they want in their local markets, or perhaps they are not reaching or or going beyond the local markets and and gaining uh, international visibility. The second problem is feeling unrewarded, and this has two aspects. One that is about uh, the reputation, has to do with this idea of visibility, and the other one is financially. So at any stage in their careers, they can feel that they don't sell enough, the galleries when they have representation are not selling enough, Um, perhaps they have to combine this, their, their practice with teaching in art school, all these sort of things. So they feel unrewarded. And the third one is lacking confidence, which in a way is a result of the first two. Lacking confidence because when you are always exposed to no, 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 obviously that starts um, impacting your self-esteem, mental health, and so on. There is a common misconception that... um, Older artists or mid-career artists or advanced career artists, they, they are confident about what they do. But actually, this is not the case. And I found that in, in, in my survey as well. I mean, I already knew it because I have many art, uh, friends, artist friends uh, that already have advanced careers. They have been in, in biennials, uh, you know, like the top events. And still you can see that if they feel that their careers are not where where they were hoping, you know, like when they started, they maybe they maybe thought that their career should be more advanced. That is going to impact their confidence as well. So uh, it's not a matter of um, age; it's throughout ages. Just to clarify, and, and and I know I'm not answering your question yet, but I'm about to. But I just want to clarify that. All the artists that I have surveyed or I have interviews are all professional artists. In many cases, they have been in the Venice Biennial, for example, or top-notch events, and ACT caters to these type of audiences. Now, the, the ACT program addresses those three main pain points that artists suffer. Uh, visibility, feeling unrewarded, and lack of confidence. The first delivery that is now available uh, online uh, is the communication module, which addresses the first uh, problem of visibility. This particular one um, is for artists uh, in the ages of 30 to 40 years old. Uh, In the near future, there is going to be one for older artists, but I have found, or I, I they need different things. They need different things in terms of communicating their practice. Younger artists wants to um, apply to residency programs. Uh, an artist from an older generation perhaps wants to know how to communicate 30 or 40 years of art practice on a website. So it's different needs. So for the first um, communication module that is available, uh, we have a stellar lineup of tutors. Uh, For example, Gilda Williams, who is the author of the book, How to Write About Contemporary Art. She teaches writing in in Goldsmiths, and she also writes for Art Forum. We have Alessio Antonioli, director of Gasworks in London and former jury member of the Turner Prize. We have Aaron Cesar as well, the director of Delfina and also jury member of the next Turner Prize. Georgina Adam, art journalist from the art, uh, art newspaper and the Financial Times. This program is four weeks long. It's a combination of live online workshops, videos, discussions, and more, where artists will learn practical methodologies to communicate their practice clearly and eloquently in different circumstances. Artist statements, writing for the websites, um, 
applying for residency programs. So anything that they need, the entire universe of communication is something they will develop skills in. But not only that, they will gain an unvanished view of the tutor's professional lives. They are all active in the art world. So they will learn what they look for, uh, how they are likely to act on certain types of writing and communication. They will learn about deal breakers, you know, when when uh, a jury member, for example, will walk away from a particular writing and why. And in this sense, it's more about understanding why certain artists stand out while others don't. So, um, yeah, artists will gain very invaluable insights and methods. So the next time they have to uh, apply to a residency program or write uh, an artist statement, they, they stand out and they can do it and they can write and feel more confident and more empowered. And in addition to artists, you're also working with galleries. Regarding galleries, when you look at how they've responded to the pandemic, which is very unprecedented and difficult event, of course, did it highlight for you certain things that galleries could be doing differently to improve their businesses? Absolutely. And ACT is all about this. Um, I also uh, surveyed and interviewed collectors during the lockdown, uh, mainly collectors that are also members of museum acquisition committees, simply because I wanted to have a focus on a type of collector who is also interested in in supporting institutions and wants to see everybody, like galleries and artists, do well in the art world. I, I continue to do this, this uh, survey and these interviews, and this is part of what galleries receive in the as part of the content of the program. Um, so one of the inefficiencies or, or, or rooms for improvement that I found during the pandemic and also not only through the, the feedback from collectors, but that you can see from, from, from galleries and how they operate um, are all issues around concepts like customer service and customer service, I say it in quote marks because it's one of those words that are also not, um, how can I say that? Like we, we don't use them in the art world as much because galleries don't want to come across to commercial by thinking about them. Collectors don't necessarily see themselves as customers, but at the end of the day, there is a relationship there between people that sell and people who are buying. So this customer service notion um, is one of the the inefficiencies or or issues that I have found uh, during the pandemic. Everything that, that has to do with audiences, with gallery audiences. So know your client. That concept is also very important and is something that if they, they did differently, they could improve their business. Who's their website for? So everything that has to do with audiences. And again, this is part of the, the, the collector's insights that they receive in, 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 their, in, in the program, as well as developing their own insights with their network of collectors and curators and museum professionals and so on. Some of the findings are actually a bit alarming uh, in, in regards to how collectors view and assess the gallery sector. And I mean, just to summarize what I what what I saw during the pandemic is that galleries are not as close to their audiences, uh, namely collectors, for example, as they think. When we think about what what they could do differently is is to work more on that relationship. It's a relationship that is very difficult to create. And it's very difficult to maintain. Um, so the way to of working more on that relationship would be adding one essential ingredient, which is that of empathy, which is one element we work a lot during the program. One of the things I want to say about this is that art galleries are sitting on vast amounts of knowledge, experience, content, network, value, but especially those that have been in the market for 20 years, for 15 years. I mean, they have done a lot. They have 
a lot of assets that they could use, but they are sitting on top of this mountain of value and it's difficult for them to take distance and see um, how to do that. I was talking earlier about this idea of um, sitting on your assumptions and not revisit them or testing them. So it's a little bit the same idea. It's like when you are writing something and you can't see the spelling mistakes. So this is the thing that happens when you have so much experience that you can no longer see it. And so what are some of the different areas you focus on in your program that you offer galleries? Yes, in the program that is available now uh, is for mid-sized galleries. It's six weeks long. Again, a combination of a training of uh, uh, an e-training platform, weekly workshops, um, and many more. And we look at three main modules. The first one is audience. The second one is market, which means mostly competitors. And the third one is website and digital channels. Um, the program is presented as, um, a, as what you need to have a strong presence online. But in reality, it's something that goes well beyond uh, your online presence. Uh, everything we see here are things that are useful offline. And there's a lot of exercises you have to do actually as part of your offline presence. And what happens sometimes or most times is that as a gallery that operates offline, so not an e-commerce or, or uh, an online only platform, your digital presence um, is almost a reflection and a symptom of everything you do offline. So uh, what can they gain from looking at their audience, their market, and their website and digital uh, platforms? First of all, they understand their audience, they can map it, they can identify it, they can see what is not working with them, so they can actually achieve better relationships with that audience, with that, those people that matters to them. They can be more visible for the artists that they represent and for all the work that they do, which is a lot. So again, this idea of all the value and the information that they have and experience is about also being recognized for all that effort. They will be more productive as a team. So it's more, it's, uh, the idea is that the, the, a few, if not the entire team, a few members of the team can do the program together and they become more productive because they learned how and they, they learn and they develop skills on defining problems. Sometimes you think you have a problem, but that is not the problem, it's something else. So the idea is to identify the problem and targeting those problems, giving solutions to those problems and not something else. And also they will gain autonomy to take care of their digital strategy and they won't depend on consultants, consultants again. So uh, part of my mission is that they don't need, need me anymore, that they don't have to call me again. I'm happy to help them, but the entire or part of the mission of this is to empower them, to make them autonomous in, in, in doing what they have to do. And finally, which is very important for me at least, is that they can align the work they do online with the work they do offline. Francesca, congratulations on launching this program for artists and galleries. I think this type of education is really valuable as they try to navigate the art world successfully. So if our listeners want to learn more about the ACT program, what's the website for them to visit? The website is www.actprogram.io. Uh, there you can see the programs available now. We have the ACT gallery program for mid-sized galleries and the communication module of the artist um, program called Getting It Across, Communicate Your Art Practice. But please um, visit the website frequently to see the new, um, the new programs we're going to add. We're going to add soon one gallery program for smaller galleries, as well as a very short training for personalizing their uh, relationship with their collectors. Perfect. Thanks so much again, Francesca. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks so much to Artbase for sponsoring this week's episode of the podcast. 
Are you managing an art collection, an artist studio, or gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? Well, Artbase is the right software to manage your art business. Artbase lets you track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. Enter your data just once and use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and much more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used on the cloud from any location on any device. So what are you waiting for? Go to artbase.com, that's A-R-T-B-A-S-E dot com to learn more, and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount.